You ever read how God talked to the Gentiles in the Old Testament? It wasn't grace be unto you and peace from God our Father. <laughs> Declare among the Gentiles, prepare war. It's a very opposite of peace. And God, that's exactly the message for the Gentiles when God gets done with this grafting in. As soon as he takes his church out of the nations, what's left of those nations, he says it's time for war, big boys. The year of my redeemed has come. And the recompenses for the controversy of Zion. This salvation that Paul's talking about here of all Israel has to do with this deliverer and the redeemer returning to Zion and saving them that turn from ungodliness in Jacob. You see that? Now, so Paul here lays out, he talks about this prophesied salvation of Israel, but he tells us that something has happened to Israel. There is a prophesied salvation of that nation. They're the only nation with a promise that they're going to be saved. Amen. Now there are going to be people from the nations that enter into that kingdom. That's not what I'm saying. But this is, how, this is what God said in the Old Testament. Though I make a full end of all nations, yet why not make a full end of thee? Israel shall be saved with an everlasting salvation, world without end. Amen. Prophesied salvation, but what Paul doesn't want us ignorant of is that something has happened to Israel. If Matthew 24 is about this salvation and something has happened to Israel, then what are you doing trying to apply it to a time that you're living in in ignorance of something else happening? So let's go back and see what happened to Israel. This is Paul now concluding what he's wrote in Romans 9, 10. Chapters 9 and 10. What then? All right. Okay, here's the answer. You ready? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. What were they seeking for? What were they seeking for, Corinth? The Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, Malachi 3. They were seeking righteousness. They were following after the law of righteousness. And the Lord whom they sought come to his temple, who is the end of the law for righteousness. And through their ignorance, they would not submit to the righteousness of God. And so Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election hath obtained it. And the rest were. Now guys, listen, man, I'm constantly letting the Bible change my mind. You know, the Gentiles were grafted in. You know what that means? It was already there. You can't be grafted into something that's not already existent. Now Paul begins to the Jew first and also to the Greek. But who was it to first? And when it came to the Jew first, Israel did not obtain that which he was seeking for, but the election obtained it and the rest were blinded. Now watch. I say then, have they stumbled? Who? This group here. He can't be talking about the election. Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, who? This group here. Through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them. Who? This group right here. To what? Now, how, how, did that, how did this happen? Watch. Now, now, you see this provocation, the jealousy? I used to just, I, I, we're so simple-minded that we, I would only think of that in the aspect of Paul trying to get other Jews saved. 
which is part of it. Right? Part of it. At this present time, God is seeking to provoke those that are blind to jealousy that they might be saved. But the full provocation of this jealousy, the full provocation of that blinded people to jealousy, look, blindness in part has happened to who? Until what? And so all Israel shall be saved. Right? Y'all following? Came to Israel first. They didn't obtain it. The election obtained it. Rest were blinded. Salvation went to the Gentiles. And that blindness that's happened to Israel is going to last until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And so all Israel shall be saved. So you know what that means? If Matthew 24 is about the prophesied salvation of the nation of Israel, it will not be fulfilled until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Plain and simple. Right? Here's the order. This is the chronological events of what's to come from this point forward. Come some of these events are part of our past. Some of them are future. In fact, the first two have already happened. And then from this point onward is future. Right? So in our past, we had the blindness and fall of Israel. Amen? And through that, you had the grafting in of the Gentiles. And in the future, you're going to have the fullness of this grafting in. This is what Paul calls mystery. Not to be ignorant of this mystery. Then you have the coming and gathering of this election of Israel and this fullness of the Gentiles. You're going to have a coming and gathering unto the Lord of that people right there. That also is a mystery. The biggest mistake people make in trying to preach the rapture is not understanding that it is a Pauline mystery. Has nothing to do with the prophetic scriptures. Has nothing to do with salvation. Stephen Anderson made a whole documentary called After the Tribulation of Those Days to get a bunch of Baptists who don't read their Bible messed up on the doctrine of the rapture. Where did he get it? Where did he get that title? Matthew 24, 29. What's Stephen Anderson ignorant of? This mystery. Right here. So you have the coming and gathering unto the Lord. Then what's going to happen? Matthew 24. And Christ breaks that down into three periods. The beginning of sorrows from verse 4 to 14. The great or, or great tribulation, Matthew 24, 15 through 28. And then after the tribulation, Matthew 24, 29 through 31. And after he gets done, he says, now learn a parable of the fig tree. Right? But all of this stuff here, guys, everything here is awaiting this. And if you don't understand that, it's because you're ignorant of this. And then you go to Matthew 24 and you're not teaching it out of true God-given wisdom out of his word. You're teaching it out of wisdom that comes out of your own head. That's why every preacher thinks every war is it. And it never is. They've been saying it since World War II. World War I. Amen. Now, do I believe I see events in my time that are leading toward these things? Absolutely. But these beginning of sorrows right here, they're very specific. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted? Right? Are y'all seeing Jews being delivered up to be afflicted? 
in synagogues and because that's who he's talking to. He ain't talking to you yet. That's the biggest problem people have with the Bible is they're self-centered. And that's, that's what leads to a lot of misuse of the Bible. Do y'all understand this so far? Well, here's what I want to focus on this morning. So after this fullness comes in, we'll do the cross, the fall and blindness of Israel, the grafting in of the Gentiles, the coming and gathering of the church under the Lord, and then you're going to have this beginning of sorrows out here. When you see the abomination of desolation, stand in the holy place, flee into the mountains, for then shall be great tribulation. And then immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Now the tribulation, notice what he says here. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. What days is he talking about? These after the man of sin is revealed and stands in the holy place. Amen? You're told in the book of Revelation that they last 1260 days. Amen? Or time times and the dividing of times or 42 months. What is that time period about? There's a beast that goes to make war with that seed for 42. He literally makes war against a race of people. Read it. He makes war against the woman and her seed. And when he can't get to her, he goes to make war with the remnant of her seed. That means he's going to be hunting them down around the world. 